Any questions? Okay. When discussing consent in a workshop, someone asked, how do you respond to someone claiming it's impractical to ask every participant for consent in a cuddle or fuck pile? Thanks in advance. Yes. Um, so Read my hook up for me about sex. Oh my God, I just want to answer this. Kathy Vartuli from the Intimacy Dojo. <laughs> it's a great question. Yeah. Yeah, the impractical uh, is an interesting um, situation because it, the question then is about is it incon- what's inconvenient? Or, or practical. Yeah. So if you're trying to, I'm trying to come up with a great example, but like if you wanted to have a bite of food off of somebody's plate and it was a dinner party with all this delicious food, is it impractical to just ask every person, I think may I have a bite of your food? Like, may I try that? <laughs> may I try that? May I try that? Or you're just like, you know, that's impractical. So you just go around just grabbing stuff off people's plates. It's well, and impolite. when it's multiple people and perhaps their mouths and or ears are occupied by people's thighs or genitals or mouths, like, hmm. How, how do you do that? Yeah. You walk into the dinner party and you announce to everyone at the dinner party, I would like a piece of food. I would like to taste some food off of each one of your plates. Is there anybody who's a no? Raise your hand. Okay. I'm, I'm, and then, mm-hmm. I, it's not weird if I go over and I say, Hi, Kathy, how are you doing? You do that to me all the time. However, what if there's several piles and you announcing like they don't have Several pi- dinner, dinner parties? I'm, we're talking about a, a cuddle or a fuck pile. Mm-hmm. If there's several piles and they're not labeled pile A, are you willing for me to join you? Pile B, I'm not talking to you. How do you announce that so that the people... Treat, don't- treat groups... This is just my opinion. No, I'm you asking. Can, I want to hear your answer. You can do whatever you want out there, YouTube. Um, but I've also been in a lot of cuddle piles, and I've been in a lot of fuck piles, and it seems that there are not a lot of people angry at me, um, and people generally think I'm good at consent. The way that I do it is treat a pile of people as if it is an, an entire whole person and you need to get consent from every part of the pile, not just the head of the pile or the one person who's like, yeah, come on in. Don't let one person in a group speak for the entire group. It's impolite, especially when it comes to sex and especially when it comes to entering a conversation that's about cuddling, right? Like it's a physical conversation using bodies. Um, you're just, you're interrupting and you can ask, hey, may I cuddle with all of you? And I'd just like a check-in to make sure I get everybody here. While that seems inconvenient, that is damn polite. No, I absolutely agree with you, but I, I want to play a little bit of devil's advocate because I've actually... Why are you being bad cop right now? Because it's fun. I yeah, never get I to play bad, bad cop. cop. Right. Um, I've actually not um, joined some piles because one person might have invited me in, but say I didn't know the other people's names and they were not looking at me or mm-hmm. they were busy and I didn't want to interrupt either the conversation or the activity. So I was like, uh, it, this looks like it would be too intrusive, so I'm going to opt out this time. So what do you do if you say you don't know person C and D's name and they're pr- in the pile but pretty busy with each other? Well, if, so you you do know somebody. I know person A has invited me to come join, okay. but C, D, E, F. C, D, I don't know their yeah. names. E, F, I so, know. So here's, this is the math. If, if the person that you know has watched this video and gets it, then they get it's important for you to get consent from everybody. Mm-hmm. And if they really want you in the pile, then they should be helping you check in with everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, that you try to check in with everybody over time helps you build a better reputation than if you only check in with one person, join the group. Like, so cuddling it might not be as big of a deal, but if it's an orgy and all of a sudden, you know, this other person's like, who are you? And why are your genitals in my face? And you're like, well, you know, Reed said it was okay to be in here. That doesn't help this person feel safe. Um, And so when you do the math ahead of it, uh, and realize, oh, this is how it could go wrong. Mm-hmm. And it going wrong, a year from now, two years from now, means no one wants to play with me at the orgy. When you look at it that way, then it's like, oh, me opting out of playing with this group because I couldn't get consent with everybody, that reputation <clears throat> is what gets you laid later way more. Yeah. 
And when you start hanging out with people who understand, oh, we should probably check in with everybody, tap, 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 hey, Bob, are you okay with Kathy joining us? <laughs> okay, that's, I'm taking that as a yes, but go back to work, Bob. <laughs> then you're, you're hanging out in communities where checking in is just done more and powerfully. And it does feel safe. Yeah. It feels safer. And then what happens is if you just, you know, by chance missed somebody because they were buried under a <laughs> oh, person. Oh, yeah, you were like, there. Sally, I didn't even know you were here. Um, that community, because of how they handle consent, it's they get that you checked it, you try to check in with everybody, and then we take it a little less personally mm -hmm. if you just happen to miss us. Yeah, and this is a great conversation. I have another question for you. Yes. Okay, so sometimes in cuddling, I've we we off, we sometimes do like spoon chains. Okay. So a spoonga line. A spoonga line. So we're spooning here, and generally at the cuddle parties I've been at, people will. Um, ask the couple people here that they might be in contact with. Mm -hmm. They're not going to ask 12 people down. Or if it's a daisy chain in a fuck pile, if, if people are like linked up, yeah. going down. Do You're you... not going to run to the front of the conga line to ask if everybody's right. okay. Right, That would be impractical. So what is your suggestion? Okay, so like this is a very good question. This is a very good question. Um, and this video is getting long, so I'm tempted that we come back. Ooh, but geez. no, let's just go long. We'll go long on this okay. one. Um, so here's, here's my answer. Think about it for yourself. Mm -hmm. If you were further up in the conga line, or the, the spoonga line, or the daisy chain, mm -hmm. and somebody further back who's not having any contact with you um, is a part of this group activity, then like, how, how would you feel about it? Mm -hmm. you know, how would you feel if your ex was at the back of the line? How would you feel if the, somebody that you thought was really creepy and you didn't like, mm -hmm. but the person at the back of the line totally doesn't mind that person at all. Mm -hmm. How does that affect your experience? Mm -hmm. and it thinking. also, well, it could also be a, an STI. Like, I like to have people have consent to things. And if someone's invited in that, you know, like, you don't know what their STI, if you haven't had a chance to have the, the conversation but, with them. But with the, with the situation that you're describing, there, there's yeah, no fluid gonna... exchange with you. Right. Or so how would you feel? Um, this is an actual question. But, um, cuddling, but think about your answers too. Yeah. For me, cuddling, I'm fine. Like as long as the people that I'm going to touch, like usually when you're in a spoon, you might be touching the person next to the person you're cuddling with, you know, just arms and legs and stuff. And so I usually check in with two or three people. Um, but for sexual contact, I think I like when everybody in my group has checked mm -hmm. in. That's my preference. And, and so how would you feel if... If the person who was going to be at the back of the spoonga line mm -hmm. ran to the front and checked in with you, even though they, there was never going to be any contact. I think, I, you know, I love that people ask consent, but I might consider that, like, we didn't need to do that for cuddling. And, and then you, because of that, you would be like, I would never want to cuddle with that person. They no, no, no. It just like part of the cuddling is just being really present with what you're doing and relaxed and not having a lot of interruptions for me. Mm hmm so I would, you know. So it would be bad that they interrupted you because they weren't going to have any contact with you. It would just feel a little, not horrible, just a little bit like, oh, you didn't need to do that. Kind of annoying, like, you know, that was over the top about consent for me. But some people may feel that. I've had people that come to a party like, I do not want to cuddle with someone of the same gender. And we want to honor their, their request on that. And they might feel that, you know, someone threw people away that's the same gender is too close. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a it's a balancing. Act. And then in a in a daisy chain, and for those who don't know what a daisy chain is, you don't need to Google it because you will see too much. <laughs> Not at work. Um, it's basically when people are having sex with each other, and and then the the person that you're having sex with is having sex with the person in front of them, and the person that's in front of them is having sex with somebody in front. And then if you can circle the daisy so that it's a complete circle, that's a thing. Um, and it can be all kinds of sex. Some people think a daisy chain can only happen if it's all penetrative. Um, but you can have an oral sex daisy chain. You can have it mix it up. Fingers, hands. You get to have, you can get them to define a daisy chain however you want. Um, so if you were in a daisy chain and somebody ran around the circle checking in with everybody, you, would you feel like you had been interrupted? Um, I don't think so. Um, I think I would feel better about it. But it also depends on how long the daisy chain is. So if it's like 15 people away, I might be like, uh, it's Then not we're okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. 
So I'm going to I'm going to say that the rule of thumb here seems to be from from interviewing this Kathy. This is my opinion. interviewing Kathy. Um that you're better checking in um than not. And then if you want to be really savvy, if you have a conversation with everybody who's at the cocktail party before about sharing food, um or in this case, hey, we're at the orgy, if there's a daisy chain that's about to happen and I want to come in a little late, can we just have a quick conversation about how we do group check-ins? Mm-hmm. And you can have a conversation about group cuddling and be how do we have group check-ins. Yeah. This is why I think it's so important to try to talk to everybody at orgies um, or have an opening conversation with people who are strangers who haven't cuddled before. Yeah. This is really the format of Cuddle Party. You can go to cuddleparty.com a lot of to find a cuddle party in, in your neighborhood. Um, but these, these group conversations at the beginning... That's what. That's one of the ways that you create safety for folks to explore affection, non-sexual, all the way to sexual. Yeah. And so to loop back to the question, when someone says, hey, I think it's impractical to check in, one of the things I like to do is say, hey, this is not a normal situation for a lot of people. There's people here probably who don't have a lot of experience on how to interact in group settings with touch. Mm-hmm. It's, it's outside what they teach us in society generally. So it's worthwhile taking the extra steps to make sure everybody feels safe and that people can relax and have a really good time. Yeah. It's also impractical to put life jackets on everybody who's in a boat and make sure that they know how to, you know, safely evacuate, um, you know, a plane or boat or like creating safety often feels impractical, especially with large groups of people. And, when you have the reputation that you make people feel safe and that you know how to create safe space for, and safe, nothing's really safe, but safer space for people, um, then you become somebody that people seek out. If you want to be somebody who's, who can be sought out for things like cuddling or daisy chains, <clears throat> um, then maybe putting in the extra work, which could feel impractical, is actually the best choice you could ever make. Thanks so much for your question. And that's one to grow on. Oh, yeah. Leave a comment. This is a long video. We apologize, but not really. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to subscribe to my social media, it's right there. And please subscribe to this channel there. If you'd like to see more goofy reading Kathy, there's more videos there. Let's see the more they there. <laughs>